This is Sheila. It's 2013. I'm just doing some audio pods now of uh, cassette tapes I did back in um, 2007 when I was looking for Zara's ancestors in Devon and Cornwall. Um, here I am at a place called Coombe Martin where there are some, I think it's mainly Loverings and Irwins that um, are connected to Zara's tree via her father. It's on her paternal side. So here we go. Right, this is tape two of the Devon expedition to find the Barberies and Loverings. I'm at Coon Martin. I started a bit on another tape looking for Loverings mainly. If we see a Barbary, it'll be very unusual, I expect. Because they were from Cornwall mainly. There was the Barbary family from Ifracoon. So off I go. And it's the 28th of June 2007 at the moment. There's a great big Irwin grave. Grey with a gold cross and green stones with a grey surround, slaty grey, of Bessie, beloved wife of Joshua Irwin, who fell asleep the 11th of June 1954, age 64. Also of Joshua himself, who passed away the 15th of March, 1977, age 84. Also their son, Thomas John Irwin, who died 1989, age 64. Of course, we don't know the connection with these more recent Irwins, but I'm, I'm just making a note of them anyway. There's another Irwin, just along from that Joshua, about four up. We've got Emily, beloved wife of the late Archie Irwin a mother of Christopher and Lillian, who died the 22nd of January, 1958, age 80. Also Lillian, widow of John N Naper Smith, who died 1986, age 91. And that's a sort of a grey, marbly looking upright stone with a small golden cross on it. There's a big, well, a white grave stone of George Irwin, who died the 5th of September, 1959, age 75, and his wife Ethel Irwin, who died the 21st of January, 1961, age 76. It says at rest on it, and it's someone's put some Lily of the Valleys on there recently, so it is visited that grave. Lots of Irwins here. Some smaller ones, these could be creme um, stones, they're upright ones rather than flat down. Treasured memories of dearly loved parents, George Reginald Irwin, born the 25th of February 1910, died the 11th of January 1982, and Gladys May Irwin, born the 15th of the 4th 1911, died the 27th of January 2001. I'm a bit surprised, I would have thought I would have seen more loverings in the newer graves. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm going on to some newish ones. Maybe they put them somewhere else. I can see there could be another graveyard yet. That's the church swinging. Midday. Albert George Irwin, in loving memory of a dear husband, Bert, who passed away September the 13th, 1963, aged 57. Also his beloved wife, Phyllis Lorraine, who passed away 9th of, no, 7th of November, 1979, aged 63. I found more Irwins than Loverins so far, but it's a big graveyard. It's absolutely a glorious day, considering that a lot of England's whole little areas are, have turned into lakes, new towns that have been built on swampland. They're all turned into lakes and people are in having a terrible time. But here, right on the rough coast of, of Devon, beautiful blue skies but with huge clouds that are going somewhere to cause trouble. Right, I've got to take a picture of this one. It's an upright Celtic cross. It's got a big surround. 
and um, it's on a plinth, and it's in loving memory of Captain John Irwin, who died 6th of October 1945, aged 86. Also, Elizabeth Esther, wife of the above, who died the 8th of July, 1948, aged 74. And Lorna Esther, their beloved daughter, who died the 22nd of March, 1982, aged 85. He was a captain, this chap, so he might be related. Another Irwin grave of George Irwin, who passed away the 11th of July, 1943, aged 82. Also, of Mary Ann, wife, who died... 17th of January 1950, age 73. Now it says on the front, in loving memory of my wife May Irwin, who died the 17th of April 1977, age 67, and of her husband Stanley George Irwin, who died the 3rd of August 1990, age 78. I have found a really brilliant lover in grave. It's in black marble. I'm taking a picture and white and grey little stones with a black marble surround. And it's in silver lettering and it's a great it's a big one. So I'm going to take a picture of it now. <coughs> and it's um a little silver cross on the top for the headstone. In God's keeping, Mary, beloved daughter of John and Ivy Lovering, called to rest on the 29th of April, 1942, aged 15. Also, John, the above, Ernest John, H. Lover, and called to rest on 19th of March, 1956, age 57. And Ivy, the above, Ivory Lovering, called to rest to 10th of January, 1970, age 77. I'm going to have to go round the graveyard selectively with the photos because I've nearly run out. That's sort of more of a newer side. I'm just making my way towards the old ones now. Right, in loving memory of Richard Levering, who fell asleep on August the 1st, 1943, aged 78, and M Meta Levering, who died the 2nd of February, 1956, aged 92. Also, Lionel William Lawson, died July 22nd, 1981, aged 90, and his wife, Rosie Lawson, who died July the 28th, 1992, aged 90. So I imagine Rosie was Richard's Loverin's daughter. And I might have to come back and take photos because I've got all this old lot to do yet. Irwin's are very big here. Um, I think this, this, this might be a Loverin. Yes, Eliza, wife of Ezeril Loverin, who died... December the 21st, 1902, age 72, also Ezkiel, E-Z-E-K-I-E-L, -E -E I got him in the censuses, who died December 1911, age 86, also James Irwin Levering, who died in age 68 in 1924, and Something Helen Lovering, daughter, who died in 1945, age 84, and then there's another Lovering, can't quite read it, could be Daniel, and he died in 19, looks like 40 something, and there's probably others, so I'll take a picture of them. There's literally hundreds of Irwins here, one has got a huge triangular plot, loads of them in, and Right next to me there's Emma Jane, daughter of John and Susan Irwin, who died December the 5th, 1881, aged 17. Also Albert, son of the above, who died March the 6th, 1887, aged 6 months. Also James, son of the above, who died February the 26th, 1901, aged 23. Also Susan Irwin, who died December the 10th, 1915, aged 77. And John died... The 13th of February, 1924. And then right next to them, with a metal rail going round it, a very, an oldish-looking curly-whirly grave, written in, um, it's an upright slaty slab, in loving memory of one son and two daughters, James and Jane Irwin of this parish. Rosie died... Right, 
of, uh, yeah, the son and daughter, two daughters of James and Susan. There's Rose, who died August the 2nd, 1873, aged six years. Stephen died January the 19th, 1878, aged eight months. Mary Jane died March the 25th, 1878, aged 21. Also, James Irwin, above, died November the 25th, 1907, aged 74. And Jane died August the 8th, 1929, aged 96. Also, Isavina, daughter of the above, and wife of Arthur Burgess, died December the 17th, 1956, aged 84. Also, Arthur Burgess, her husband, died December the 26th, 1958, aged 80. That's a lovely stone. I'm going to have to take a picture of it. If I run out of film, I'll have to get Sarah when she comes for us to take them, because I'm, I've got hundreds here, they're all around me. I see Leverings over there. Definitely going to run out of film, which is a shame. Anyway, I'll just carry on a minute. Irvins everywhere. Um, we've got Rachel Stock, formerly Irwin, 1875 to 1962, much loved. Also her husband, Alfred Ernest Stock, and their son, Douglas Irwin Stock. Then another big grey slab right in front of the nice curly whirly one is John Irwin who died the 15th of March 1875 aged 71. You see this could be Anne Irwin's father for all we know. Also Susan, widow of the above who died the 4th of September 1884 aged 78. Also of Mary, widow of the late John Greek and daughter of the above, who died the 17th of November, 1908, aged 61. Then there's another long list of Irwins on a smaller stone within this rectangular surround. is George Irwin, 1837 to 1878, Mary Ann Irwin, 1838 to 1915, and family. William, George, Charlie, Archie, Christopher, Lillian, Rachel, Evelyn, Alice Mary, Douglas and Winifred. And that ranges from 1863 up to 1998 on that stone. Some dying when they were young. So I'm going to have to, to, have to take a group one of this. Right in front of the group one I've just taken, there's John Irwin, the beloved son of Charles and Eliza Cut Cutcliffe who died at Allscott in the parish of Barry Narber, March 8, 1874, aged 21. Also, Nicholas Ernest, son of the above, who died at Newport, May the 15th, 1885, aged 17. And there's a huge, great big thing on the Cutcliffe um, Memorial Stone, huge, huge big slab. All well preserved. All the inscriptions in this graveyard are well preserved. Nicholas Cutliffe Yeoman, he is a yeoman of this parish, who departed this life on the something day of May in the year of our Lord. It's all in Latin, so I don't understand it. Um, Hear what the voice from heaven proclaims for all the pious dead. Sweet is the saviour of their names, and soft their sleep in bed. Also William Cutcliffe. Um, so the Cutcliffe family were related to that lot of the Irwins. Very well preserved these um, graves are. And they've got summer wills as well that are tied up. A great big parking one. Like I said, all around me and surrounded by Irwins and Loverings. I'm in the old park now. I'm so I've taken a picture, but if I'd come back a bit, I could have got that one in as well. Right, moving on now. Pretending to forget what I've done now. Um, under a oak tree, down from all those other Irwins, is James Irwin, who died the 1st of June, 1923, aged 66. And, and his wife, Mary Ann, who died in 1933, aged 76. Also, Mary Ann, daughter, and wife of James Blackmore, who died the 17th of January, 1907, aged 26. John Irwin, James and Mary Irwin, 
died 19th, 1962, age 73. Grace Irwin, wife of the above, died 1967, age 83. Graves are facing in other directions. We've got William Lovering of this town who departed this life on the 23rd, 25th day of February 1823, age 77. Also, in memory of Joanna Lovering, wife of the above, who departed this life June 19th, 1828, age 83. Of their daughter Rebecca Lovering, who departed life on the 9th of something, 1837, age 63. And then there's another Lovering which I can't make out down the bottom. I think it's Joette, something Joanna, daughter. What's a Lovering there tucked in? I'm going to take a picture of this one because it's age. 1820s. We've got Edward Lovering, beloved husband of Ellen Lovering, who died the 14th of December 1942, age 80. Also of Lillian, dearly loved daughter of the above, who died 16th of November 1942, age 52. Always in the hearts of those who loved them. Also of Ellen Lovering, named above, who died 19th of May 1955, age 55. Also of R Reginald Lovering, who died the 30th of November 1977, aged 92. And that's next to a, uh, a Hustle, spelled H-U-S-S-E-L, a Hustle family, Thomas, uh, William and Susan Hustle, and their children. Right, at the other side of the church, lying flat of a great big grey slab, isn't it another Irwin family, which I'm just going to try and clear away a bit, so I can see it. They're pretty good, I don't have to do that, because this, this one's flat. got no moss on any of these stones around here. Like no calaplaca, no lichen, and all the old stones are all very visible. It's brilliant, it must be the air. It must be polluted on, from the past when they had all those silver mines. All the, um, Apparently it was quite a polluted area when they were, um, you know, chimney pots and everything. It could have been the sulphur. Anyway, up here we got... <sighs> I'm just trying to find out it is. Squires married on point. She died April 
1928 to 59. Then there's um, Edward George Draper, son-in-law, who was killed in action in 1918, aged 28, interred in a cemetery in France. Also, Claudia Draper, dearest loved wife of the dove, Edward George Draper, daughter of William and Joanna Squire, who died May the 29th, 1933, age 36. And, and there's um, a Vida Hicks, daughter of the above, who died 1935, age 44. Another Irwin, they're everywhere. Here we've got John Irwin. This is a pink marble upright stone, the other side of the church by another entrance. He, um, John Irwin, died age 75 in 1987, and Mary Irwin, who died in, it looks like, maybe it was 1887, actually, I'm not quite sure, that looks like 18 as well, 98, yeah, 18. So John died in 1887, and Mary died 1888, age 75, also John, their beloved, the beloved husband of Mary Ann Irwin, and son of the above, who died the 22nd of June, 1937, age 78, also Mary Ann Irwin, died 1954, age 93. Next to that is a very old stone, which has got like a hourglass um, on it, with two lots of crossbones across it, and it says, Dear husband, all in old English, Dear husband mourn for me no more, nor children shed a tear, for I am not loft were gone before unto my saviour dear. That's very old, but like, um, it's worth taking a picture of really, but I'm no on film. But uh, it's very old, I think that's 17th century, with the, with the, um, the crossbones on it. More Squire Graves. I don't know what the relationship to that is yet, but there was an Irwin with the Squires, so but I'm not going to go doing all that now. It's a brilliant graveyard here, they're so well preserved. Oh, I've just come across a Lovering. A lovely upright one, similar to that one in, um, Borough Green of um, Emma Oak and the Brig Bloke. It's got a little lamb on it, and it's in loving memory of William John, beloved child of William and Emily Lovering, who died Feb September 18th, 1892, aged six years, also of William Lovering, who died March 27th, 1920, aged 78. And Emily Lovering, who died August the 31st, 1923, aged 74. Also of Anne, widow of the late John Lurwill of East Down, who died February the 19th, 1925, aged 85. So that's a Lovering. There's a brass plaque in the tower end inside the church. It says... To the glory of God, the electric lighting of this church was installed in 1946 by two parishioners, Mrs. Elizabeth Irwin, in memory of her husband, Captain John Irwin, and Mrs. Caroline Andrew, in gratitude to Almighty God for the safety of Coombe Martin during the war 1939-2045. So that's so Irwin. There's another plaque. It says, to the greater glory of God and in memory of Edgar Raymond Irwin, who died the 3rd of July, 1971, aged 76. He was for 24 years rector's warden of this church. All right, it's four o'clock now. Since I left Coombe Martin, I've got into, uh, if for Coombe, I bought some couple of little things for Daisy, pirate things. I went back to the museum. I thought I was going to stay in there longer, but I think she was busy, so I didn't actually get 
I was glad anyway, I was tired really, I didn't fancy ploughing through loads of parish registers, so I thought I'd do that another time, and she's given me a research ticket, so I don't have to pay when I go in the library next time. But she gave me a few little bits that she'd found. There was one D lovering, possibly Daniel, and there was quite a riot at the church when he married um, a Mary Smith, because his first wife had only died three months, or two months before, after giving birth to a stillborn child. So there was, it was very disapproved of, and she gave me the article that was written in the paper about that, and then a couple of other articles as well, to do with evidence that Nicholas Lovering had given over some disaster or, uh, or other. I also had a wander around, I went to the library and s sat and read a couple of books on local history, and I also photocopied a picture of Africans were mariners, seafarers, including um, one of Zara's great-great-grandfathers, Nicholas, who's, who was known as Brown Jug Lovering, um, and the other nicknames that um, seafarers were given. There's also a picture of the Golden Lion, one of the oldest pubs that was, which was pulled down to make the key bigger. And I've got a feeling a lovering, or it might have been a bar, but I think it was a lovering, could have even been Nicholas that ran that pub for a while or was living there. Anyway, he's the one with a great big beard and a sort of trilby, black trilby hat thing on. So I've got a few knickknacks for Zara. I took loads of photos today, especially at Coombe Martin. And they told me in the museum that the name Irwin was also very, very common, especially in Coombe Martin. Um, so I found the grave of one of the Nic Nicholases, and it could be... It, it might have been Anne in there, I can't remember now. I'd have to have a look back and, and try and remember the tape later. But I'm absolutely knackered now. I've just made myself some tin stew. I'm having a nice cup of tea, and I plan to go back across Exmoor, even though the weather has turned. I mean, I've actually caught the sun this morning, it was so warm and hot, blue sky and everything, but it's, it's turned now, and bad weather is reported to come. It's very windy, um, the sky's gone grey, and well, the sea didn't look too bad, but it's getting choppier and it's starting to rain. So I've done my little trip and discovered quite a few things to do for Zara. And I know sort of roughly where to take her. The only problem, it's very hilly here. Everywhere you go, you seem to have to go up a hill unless you just keep to the seafront. And even then, it's hilly in places. Yesterday, I went up um, Lantern Hill where um, the Davy family had lived for a long time. It supposedly had a lamp in it that warned ships um, of approaching land. Um, so that's it. Over and out. Right, it's Monday. I can't remember what date it is. It could be the 16th of September. It might be. <coughs> All right, I'm going to carry on with that part of the tape on another audio because um, it's... That's ended quite well there, um, doing the visit to Coombe Martin and a little bit about what I discovered in Ifra Coombe. Unfortunately, one of the tapes was has just got destroyed. I'm keeping all the parts just in case it can be repaired one day. But, for, but fortunately, I did do a recording of that onto Ancestry.com. So all I've got to do is go on, get that, my... Um, my, my site up and then I can literally record off the computer um, so it's not lost but the original tape is actually physically on um, died on that one um, so anyway it snapped maybe it, it can be repaired who knows I'm not going to throw it away it will be kept so over and out for now this is Sheila in 2013 going back to 2007 
So there's been an awful lot of discoveries which aren't even mentioned on that tape recorder. That audio pod is in 2007 and we're coming along six years since with loads of discoveries which will be found all over the place on my tree. Audios, videos, photos, everything with more visits planned over and out.